Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning January 24th, 2022. If you haven't checked it out yet, I have launched the Archangel Ariel 7-Day Meditation Challenge. That is available over at gumroad.com slash angel souls. Ariel is all about prosperity and abundance and detoxing and getting in touch with nature, material manifestation, all of that. So if you want to go check that out over at Gumroad, and of course, if you want a personal reading, just go to angelsouls444.com. All of that information is in the description box. Like most readers, we have, you know, scammers out there who are trying to pose as us. Please be discerning about who you listen to. Obviously, a professional is not going to reach out to you and say, hey, I feel a frequency about you. Let me give you a reading and here, send money here. Be discerning, okay? All of the links that I provide in my description box, those are the valid links, all right? So there is that. Please just report scammers as they come up. That's about all we can do. I've alerted Instagram. It happens across social media. Just report it. I've reported it. There's nothing else I can do. Just be your own best advocate and let's not panic, okay? These people, they, they exist and they're always gonna be trying something we just have to not give them our energy. All right. So let's look at this week. Of course, earth changes, earth changes, earth changes. I feel that so immensely, of course, we had, um, a, what was that, a tsunami a, a warning? Was it an actual warning on the west coast of the United States? But um, the volcano near Tonga and what that did to that island and you know all of these things, this is not going to be going away. And we are going to see more, you know, as, as certain things are ending, we're going to see more effort by certain beings to put fear in and reignite something that is really a failing plan. This is something that I am hearing. It is a failing plan. It has had some success out there, but it didn't go as far as maybe the planners wanted it to. And so I'm not trying to be all like conspiracy theory here, but it's just this energy that I'm picking up on. And that doesn't mean that you're not uh, diligent about your care and your health and your well-being and your safety and all of that. Of course, you know, you do what you feel is right, but I'm talking more about a narrative that's out there. And that's going to be uh, the most dangerous thing as far as what happens to us. Because if we're put in a place of fear, or desperation, we lower in frequency, right? And then we are uh, more willing to just accept anything, whatever that might be, because we're in that place of desperation. We think that we have to just take what we're given. I would definitely say, I mean, I think, obviously we've been seeing a lot of winter storms. I keep feeling like the messages are coming about the earth changes and trying to get people prepared. And as I've said, you know, not being scared, not, you know, doing all of that, but waking up and realizing, well, we need to adjust to whatever is going on, okay? So there, there's a message here too about us not being so self-centered. I've said it before and I will say it again. Look at what videos are the most popular. YouTube's a great study in human behavior. Look at what videos are the most popular. You know, this is what he feels about you. Someone adores you. Someone, you know, oh, you're going to, oh, that person's talking behind your back. You know, all of these things that really do drag us into the charge of drama and even the charge of gossip. And, you know, that could be entertaining. I think that's why people gravitate towards junkier, <laughs> like stories, like novels, or, you know, maybe you have your little guilty pleasure uh, with what type of TV shows you watch. And I'm not saying that that needs to be a bad thing, so long as you go into it knowing what it is, all right? But when people go in and they're already in a low state, maybe they already don't feel loved, and they're getting sucked in by some supposed message that someone out there is madly in love with you, what do they do? They hang on they hang on. And sometimes in some situations, it fuels them to such a level that they don't even exist with other people anymore. Does that make sense? So I think this is very telling. And this is very telling of the times that we're coming into. We are waking up to, I was just telling somebody this, we are waking up to the dynamics of relationships. And you know, if you're watching this video and we start saying relationships and you start shutting down, that's something to look at. 
you have relationships with other human beings, right? Even if it's just a stranger at the grocery store, there's some interaction there. But we have been trained to believe that a love partnership just looks good on paper. We have seen many examples of toxic love styles out there and we think it's normal. And then we go into a phase where we're forced to be at home and now we have problems. Why? Because the delusion is crumbling down. The delusion is crumbling down and we're realizing that we have settled for less, that we've allowed ourselves to be um, trampled upon. And that could be in a lot of different ways. You know, that could be in what kind of love partner you choose, what kind of friends you choose to be around. How many times have you seen people just hang out with others just to look popular? Or they just allow anybody into their sphere, into their energetic field. So they, because we do, we, we think that people are better if they have a lot of people around them. There must be something to love about that person if so many people want their energy. But that could just be someone who's energetically needy and they're siphoning off of people and bringing them in. I mean, we could have a whole discussion around that, but we're waking up to this now. We're waking up and realizing that, you know, love is not a game of musical chairs, okay? And as soon as the music stops, we just grab whoever. And just so long as we have someone, even though they've given us all kinds of red flags and things, one of the things that we've been trained to really get pulled in by would be the mystery. Think like the bad boy, the crazy girl, right? Like we, we have those stereotypes out there. You know, the, the woman that's crazy and you know, the guy gets sucked in. I remember I had a friend way back when, his girlfriend was so blatantly controlling, abusive, like she'd just do this right out in front of everybody. And yet all she had to do was snap her fingers or play the victim and he would go running. She had him entrapped. And, you know, this happens to women all the time. It happens to anybody out there, whatever your gender is. It happens to all of us in that relationship dynamic. So we have really disconnected from understanding what love truly is. And we end up flowing towards things that, in a weird way, make it so that we can remain disconnected from anything real, any kind of real connection. We have come to accept, if let's say you're out there in the dating world, we have come to accept someone saying, you know, I'm not looking for anything serious right now. And that's okay, but that has become code for, I'm just in here for a little bit and then I'm gonna go. I'm pretty much gonna use you, so be ready for that, you know, in some circumstances. So do you see, we're breaking the code. This is gonna take a long time because so many people are so brainwashed. This video, people probably won't like it very much at all. But we do this with work too, don't we? Oh, you work for that company? That's impressive. Well, if you've ever worked for a supposed impressive company and you're behind, you know, behind the walls of that company, you know, it's just regular. I mean, it's just like any other company, right? I mean, everybody has their thing and everyone's just working and it's not that big a deal, right? But there's this whole idea of the facade, this, this thing that we have been trained to create around us and we're in a world where in a way we are the AI, that facade that we create, that's that robot outside of us that interacts with other robots in the world. And then we, the energetic part of us is in a low frequency, not really feeling love, not really feeling connected, not really knowing what to do. This is where we start to get into confusion. And you know, there's this push pull between what I feel like I want to be drawn towards and what I feel like I want to express my energy as. And then there's this other side of expectation. And then we start to hold ourselves up by those same expectations. So this is the message for this week. We're going to get into some cards, really try to catch yourself. Um, if you go into uh, any kind of anything that's kind of shallow or superficial, if you're going into it of like, oh, I just want to it's entertaining, whatever. It's kind of, I get a kick out of it. You know, that's one thing. But if you are truly in a pained state, for example, just like the example I was given at the top of this reading, at the top of this message, uh, that I feel disconnected from somebody and I'm in this hurt place. And then you go to a reading that's supposedly going through someone's free will and seeing how they think and how they feel. And that person's interpreting it back to you. And you're taking that as 
the gospel. You might be misled. You might be getting into a very dark space. You might getting your, be getting yourself stuck in a cycle, a karmic cycle, a lesson cycle, what have you. I've been talking about this for a very long time. I feel like no one has been hearing the messages. So we'll try again and put it out there again. It's about your intention. It's about the work and it's about waking up. And that is what waking up entails. It means looking at our patterns. It means waking up to, you know, toxicity and not just judging others and saying, I am projecting my toxicity onto you and saying, you're the toxic one, right? That's a fake positivity. Uh, what I call woke broke, <laughs> You act so woke, but really you're, you're about as toxic as they come uh, with your judgment and not being open-minded about other people's experiences and so on and being very hypocritical in a way. So let's be aware of that. It's not going to happen just in one week. If you want this message to get out, make sure you're sharing this message and let's get on to the cards. All right. So again, be careful in how you take things. You know, I'm using cards, but these are never meant to be taken in a very shallow kind of way. Uh, it's meant to expand your thinking and hopefully get you to click into your emotions a little bit to do some self-discovery. There's a card that flopped right out. Here it is. Yeah. Queen of Gabriel. So we got to really, I don't know why I said that. Queen of Gabriel. <laughs> we got to see where we're flowing our energy. There's a big call from our sacral chakra, this life force energy that wants to come out and create something better. But then we, you know, get our intellect, which has been, again, very conditioned. It hits up on that and then we're a little stuck because, well, what I wanna create doesn't really fit in this world or, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish or get out there, it has to be chopped up in, you know, this sort of like wood chipper of all these rules and then it's gonna come out this big. Like, <laughs> so we, we are having to, uh, find a way to redirect our creativity and to take our power back in creating the next chapter of our lives. Okay. So this is passionate, charming, brilliant, independent. You can do anything right now. Go after what you want, the ability to attract helpful people. But again, doing that with the utmost integrity and greatest intention. We always have to do everything. Anything we're trying to create, it needs to be done in the highest good of everyone involved. All right. So again, that feels like getting empowered again, maybe letting go of toxic connections. Um, be careful of anybody who wants to come at you with a story. It gets tricky. I know we as empaths, we always want to see the good in everybody. You know, we want to believe that people can be reformed, but if someone has done something wrong to you, like they've really done something dark or really just didn't care about your needs, didn't care how things were affecting you. And you never got an apology. We're always told, you know, don't expect that apology because that's expecting someone to change on your behalf. But what I'm getting at here is if you really look at what a healthy minded person would do and what a toxic person does, a healthy minded person, if they step on your foot, they're going to turn around and say, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? What can I do? A toxic person is going to say, well, you got in my way. Well, this is your fault. Watch where you're going. We need to start waking up. All right. And not tolerating that kind of behavior and not making excuses for people. No matter. And that's the thing too. No matter how much you love them, maybe there's somebody that you really, really love. I see it all the time. These toxic dynamics and people are like, well, I see the good in them. And well, don't be so hard on them. Well, this, well, that. Well, everybody makes their choices. Okay. And you can choose to be a healthy person <laughs> who actually cares about others, or you can choose to just be very, very self-centered. And you just rob yourself of any sort of um, rich connections and, you know, real love. Be it friendship, family connections, love partnerships. What have you? All right. We have the star. A lot of healing going on here. Archangel Jophiel, a dream come true. Believe in yourself. The end of a difficult situation. But again, it's this discovery here of, okay, I have been putting my energy into the wrong things. I have not been allowing myself to stop and look. We get into this phase, some of us, where we're just like, either people get really deep into their victimhood. I can't accomplish anything. Nothing good ever happens for me. Everyone's just always cruel to me. You know, I've been in that space. And if you've ever been abused, it's very easy to 
get into uh, a frame of mind where you think you're just always waiting for the next person to be horrible. And if you've been abused a lot, you expect abuse. And you can be crying out from the corner and saying, everyone's awful, everyone's awful. And if people don't have that same experience, they look at you and say, what the heck is wrong with you? Get out of the corner. But they don't understand it's not that easy because your vision of truth, your experiences have been experiences of pain and deep wounding and hurt. And so, no, you're not going to, this is that thing where people are like, well, if you're just in, if you're in an abusive situation, why don't you just get out? It, it doesn't work like that. All right. We have to start breaking through our own healing and understanding what's been coming at us and find a way to get ourselves out of that situation. But again, it's tapping back into our own power, our own life force, and not giving it away to people who refuse to create their own life force and stealing it from others. All right, so the star, or healing, letting things go, waking up, seven of Michael, there is a better course of action available to you. Working alone may not be the best answer. Review all the details. So here again, this is where we've leaned too much on maybe other people's opinions of us, only seeing ourselves as worthy and valuable and talented or smart or however, you know, whatever's been bothering you recently uh, because of other people's definition of us. And there's another thing too of not trusting the light, not trusting the light, not trusting that things can actually be good. And if I open myself up and I open myself to love or I open myself up to a better path or a better way, a better approach, it's just going to disappoint me. Well, that's because we're used to taking the dark path. We usually are not, we're not even aware of the light sometimes because we get into the fear of being able to take care of ourselves, uh, the fear of making things happen, the fear of, you know, being diminished or whatever, right? So we get so caught maybe in a work cycle that's toxic or a love cycle that's toxic just because I have to be with somebody. I just have to look a certain way or, um, you know, I have to have a certain reputation <laughs> or what have you in my, for my status or whatever. But here's where it is. So if we make some decisions here to remember our power, to allow ourselves to heal and let go, to realize there's a better way and get empowered enough to start exploring that and being grounded, okay, in doing that, we have this new emotional experience. And this is Page of Raphael, gentle, loving, dreamy, open-hearted, a new emotional situation messages regarding relationships or social in invitations, great intuitive insights. So this is the great reset, but this is getting back in touch with our heart. Think about why there's such an epidemic of narcissism. Why would that be? Even though we can't diagnose it, right? Because there's so, and that, isn't that even interesting? Even to diagnose, to diagnose somebody as narcissistic, it has to go through all these steps and it has to be, last I heard, I'm not an expert, um, it has to be affecting that person's life negatively. Well, if you're the one constantly taking advantage of everybody else and feeding off of everybody else, yeah, you're having a good experience, but nobody else is. It's a weird way of diagnosing it. And so nobody gets diagnosed. It, to me, it just feels like another way of shoving it under the rug and not addressing what's going on and the toxic behavior. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We don't treat our children very well. Um, either people are just not very sensitive to children, or they baby them too much. My generation did that. Next thing you know, we've got this whole new generation of people out there who think they know everything and everybody who came before them knows nothing <laughs> and validating everybody else's experience because yeah, so it, we need to get to this place of clearing, being aware of it and clearing it away. And uh, if you really want peace and harmony, we need to work together on that. And it's not gonna be easy. It might not be fun, but it's got to be done. All right. Now, I want to say, too, I will be posting a writing video. You'll want to check that out if you are a writer, if you're just curious about writing, or you want to use writing as a tool for spiritual enlightenment, healing, what have you. We will be doing a writing session together. All right. And there will be more to come on that. We'll, you know, from the writer's perspective about publishing. I worked in publishing for a while. So we'll talk about all of that. I got something on my card here. 
to clean that up. Okay. <laughs> Tangerine. See, I have, I put on a ton of makeup when I film. And so like makeup gets all over the cards at the thing. Okay. Anyway, Tangerine, be spontaneous and have fun. The number is 17. This definitely in the context of this reading feels like we are unlocking ourselves from a toxic narrative, from a control structure. And the thing that we are trying to finesse now is realizing that the solution isn't to blame. The solution isn't to victimize ourselves. Uh, the solution is not to whine about it or, you know, whatever, <laughs> get up there and like scream at everybody else and say, you need to be different. The answer here, it feels, it's not my answer. It's just whatever's coming through here, um, is to step back and allow the light to come in. What this is going to do, this is the sense of freedom here, but this is going to help us unlock some old beliefs about ourselves and about others. This is going to help us heal. This is going to help us release. Um, and I keep hearing we're in dangerous territory. We're in dangerous territory, it feels, because people are so afraid to be wrong or to admit that they're wrong. I don't get what this is. I don't know, but maybe for this week, that's, oh, one of my, oh, weird. There's a ghost in the house. One of my candles just went out. It's probably just burned down. <laughs> that creeped me out a little bit. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, that's kind of weird. Maybe there's like a ghost from the past or something. We are in a lot of retrogrades right now. So, um, I, I don't understand what they're saying here. A danger zone of people not wanting to be wrong. What I feel like is that people are staying stuck in a toxic energy. Or if you've wronged someone, let's say you've been, you've been cruel, or maybe you weren't cruel, but maybe you just, you only cared about yourself and you didn't think about how much somebody else was going through. Shame, the danger of shame, the danger of guilt, because then that holds people up from coming through their lessons. It holds people in a toxic energy pattern that just keeps cycling around. It, it's not good for anybody involved. So I don't know what the solution is there. <laughs> Honestly, I just felt like be aware of it. So I guess um, that'll come in stages. So we'll leave it there for this week. Let me know how you're feeling and how your week is going. And as always, I intend you all so much love and take care.